I'm Will Harris, and White Oak Pastures is my farm around Bluffton, Georgia, in and around Bluffton, Georgia. And my family's been here for 151 years this year. This is 2017. My great-grandfather came here after the Civil War in 1866. When he came, he brought with him livestock, a number of different species. He would have raised cows, hogs, sheep, goats, chickens, turkeys. I'm really not sure what else. I guess the most important thing is the cattle because when my uh, father industrialized the farm after World War II, all the other animals went away except the cattle. He became a full-time professional cattleman. The cattle herd that we have here today are the descendants of the cracker cattle or piney woods cattle that my great-grandfather brought here in 1866. Uh, for the first uh, hundred years or so, uh, it was a closed herd. They saved their own bulls, they saved their own heifers, they brought them all back to each other and they were, uh, that's the way the cow business was done. Uh, after World War II, oh, about World War II, my father started bringing in other breeds of bull. Uh, every cow that I have here today uh, on the maternal side can be traced back to the cattle that my great-grandfather brought here in 1866, 151 years of continuous genetics on the maternal side. The gestation period of a cow today, as it has always been, is 283 days. So basically, you get one calf per year from each mama cow. Uh, they'll breed back in uh, one, two, three months, and you start the process again. For a long time, we had a very finite breeding season. I turned the bulls out with the cows on January 15th and mustered them back out 60 days later, uh, March 15th. The reason we did that, the reason we evolved into that breeding season is uh, I was, it was an elf, I was in the industrial uh, beef complex at the time, raising calves to go to feedlots in the West. And you wanted your calf crop to be very consistent. So having them uh, born in a 60 day window is, was desirable made it very convenient uh, to have a, a close, tight breeding season. The reason for the timing, January 15th, March 15th is, that allowed us to have calves born in October, November. And that was a very, that's a very, traditionally a very high market. Most of the calves in this country, in the United States, are born in the spring. So when you sell those calves uh, nine months later, uh, to the feedlots, the uh, price would be not so high for the calves, calves born in the spring. A, a lesser number were born in the fall or calved in the fall, so you hit a high market. Uh, that, that was the reason for it. You could probably get five, six, seven cents a pound more for the calf crop if you could sell them in that September, October kind of winter. So that's what we did. Uh, it was not necessarily the right timing for nature. And I'm not sure I know exactly what the right timing is for nature. Uh, we, we're experimenting with that right now. Uh, today, we still save our calves, uh, our, our heifers, uh, to make mama cows out of them. Uh, the way we choose them is January the 15th, I turn a proper number of bulls, usually one bull for 20 cows, uh, out with the whole calf crop, the whole heifer crop. And we'll leave them out there. Uh, eventually it'll be for 21, 42, 63 days, one or two or three estrus cycles. Estrus cycle for a cow is 21 days. Right now I'm leaving them out there for a long time. And the reason is to eventually let the cattle tell me when they want to calve. They will eventually settle in and there'll be a bell curve on when the calves come. And when we determine that, I'll allow that to be my calving window, move it back 283 days, that'll be the breeding window. Uh, you know, this, uh, you know, we have, uh, I'm in uh, the semi-tropical coastal plain of southwest Georgia. 
Uh, we keep something green growing year round, but we do have seasons. Uh, we have spring, fall, winter. Further south, you really don't have that so much, we, but we do have changing the seasons. And there's an optimum time for calving and I don't think research can tell us what that is. I think that you have to let the animals do that. We're in the process of determining what that is right now. Uh, <clears throat> prior to moving to this uh, method of selecting heifers, which is turn bulls in with all of them and leave them for a short period of time, uh, I did it very differently. Uh, when I was in the University of Georgia, I majored in animal science and we spent hours and hours and hours discussing proper heifer selection, how to pick the female calf that will make a good mama cow. A lot of science behind it, a lot of research behind it, uh, all of which I embraced 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, but little of which I embrace today. Uh, I really believe that uh, uh, the, the process was you did pelvic examinations, you weighed them, you measured them, you kept up with the genealogy. Uh, today, as I said, what we do is turn the bulls out with all of them. The ones that conceive may get to live here for 20 plus years having babies. This is 2017. And I've got a handful of cows that were born in 1996, still having calves. You know, there's not many of them, but I got a few that just have that kind of longevity. 